Well, hi everybody, and welcome to BridgeWorks. This is a series of videos and small group discussions in the Book of Romans. And these lessons are intended to accompany the This Is Us message series that we're doing here at First Reformed Church in Orange City. Well, I'm here in front of a bridge just outside of Alton here in Sioux County. Because in my mind, the Book of Romans is a book about building bridges. You know, today we take bridges for granted. We drive over bridges all the time in our cars and trucks. But in the ancient world, crossings like this one would have been a big challenge to travelers. There were many river crossings and canyon crossings. There were great gorges across which people and food and water had to be brought. And all of these presented significant puzzles and challenges to people in the distant past. Well, help came with the Romans. The Romans were master bridge builders. At latest count, archaeologists have identified 931 Roman-built bridges. These are in 23 different countries and three continents. Some of them are still standing and are still in use today, like the Alcantara Bridge in Spain. Well, what were the keys of success for Roman bridge builders? Well, first, they were masters at organization. They could get together teams and cores of workers, master craftsmen with pulleys and levers and all the kind of mechanical tools needed to construct enormous bridges. Second, they became masters of the arch and understood that by building arches, you could prevent bridges from being washed out by torrential rains and floods. And lastly, they understood how to pour concrete underwater. They developed a special kind of cement that could be used to pour piers beneath the surface of the water. All these facilitated an incredible project of bridges and crossings that networked the empire, many of whom I mentioned are still in use today. Well, the book of Romans, the New Testament, I believe is also a book about bridge building. And thanks to the genius and faithfulness and the communicative skill of the Apostle Paul, this book serves as an extraordinary connector of people even to our present time. Paul was able, because of the Holy Spirit, to bridge previously intractable theological divides and connect people together and also unite people in new ways with God. See, the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans in part to build a bridge between himself and the church there in Rome. Despite the fact that he had traveled all across the Mediterranean and he had many friends there at the church in Rome, Paul himself had never been to visit the congregation there in the capital city. And part of his vision was to bring the gospel to the very ends of the Mediterranean world, to go all the way to Spain, and in order to do that, Paul needed to build a bridge himself into the West. And so he wrote this letter as a way of bridging his relationship with the congregations that had been meeting there in that city. Inside of the book of Romans, there are a number of bridges and theological chasms that Paul spanned as well. And as we work our way through this video lesson, we're going to look at a few of these in sequence. Generally speaking, Paul is trying to bridge a gap for the people in their frame of mind in terms of relating with God. So many people believe that their relationship with God was a matter of self-righteousness. But Paul wanted to cross the chasm and be, bring people into an understanding that it was in faith and in grace that they connected with God. Beneath that, there are kind of five bullet points, five smaller bridges that we'll, we'll talk about crossing together. The first is in chapter 4, the bridge in the idea of salvation being from following the law to an act of faith. After that, we'll look, about the, look at the bridge from death to life that Paul talks about in the last part of chapter 5 and the first part of chapter 6. In the third lesson together, we'll talk about the bridge that Paul made from a, a them mindset 
to an us mindset. As Paul talked about how Gentiles and Jews could live together in one congregation faithful to God. The fourth lesson, which is taken from chapter 12, is the bridge from concept to conduct, in which Paul moves from thinking about the theological underpinnings of a relationship to God into what it means to live practically as people together and to speak well, to think well, to relate well, and to live well in the world around them. And in the last lesson, chapter 16, we'll talk about the bridge from the leader to the led as Paul moves to giving away ministry to other people in the Roman church. Finally, and most importantly, the bridge that spans all of these questions is about the great gulf that God has spanned in Jesus Christ. A perfect God, a holy God, coming to meet, abridging himself the distance between perfection and a sinful people. I look forward to sharing these videos with you over the next few weeks and hope that you'll have a, a wonderful and fruitful time of discussion with your small group.